everyone, what's up? My name is Joss and welcome back to my channel, Squibbles Reads. So it has been a long ass time since I actually sat down to film a video and for those of you who follow me on Twitter or on Instagram, you will know why. But before we start the video, please leave me a comment down in the comment section letting me know how you guys have been over the past half year because I would love to hear what you all have been up to as well. If you truly don't care why I've been away, no offense taken, I will leave a timestamp on the screen so you can fast forward to where I talk about the books that I've read over the past six-ish months. But but I am super pregnant. I am full term and literally about to have a baby before the end of the month. We are super excited and I have wanted my whole life to be a mom. We are just over the moon grateful for this whole experience. Um, I know that it is a personal choice for everyone whether to or to not have kids. Which brings me to why I haven't really been on YouTube or really reading in the past half year or so. So like I was saying, everyone's experience is different and that ties into everyone's pregnancy is different. There are definitely a ton of people for whom pregnancy is amazing and they've never felt sexier or glowy or healthier. But unfortunately for me, that was not my case. I was diagnosed at around nine weeks with something called hyperemesis gravidarum, which is an actual diagnosis and it affects about 0.5 to 2% of pregnancies. This is the thing that people most commonly associate with Kate Middleton. I believe she had it with all of her kids, which really sucks. It's basically the same symptoms as morning sickness, which is a total shit term if you ask me, but everything times like 5 million. It basically means vomiting and also coming out the other end to the point of dehydration, losing so much water and so many minerals and nutrients that your body just like cannot keep up and you become severely dehydrated. Some people even end up having to go to the hospital to be on IV fluids and nutrients just to keep mom and baby thriving. So when you lose that much water, your blood pressure drops and you start to feel dizzy, nauseated, faint. And the symptom that unfortunately affected my life the most and my reading life the most was getting vertigo. If you haven't had vertigo before, it is something that I experienced before pregnancy, but it just got so much worse when I got HG. So basically it feels like the whole world is moving when it's not. And when, when you see something, you'll reach out to touch it and it's not actually there because the whole world is spinning. So like you can probably imagine things like walking up and down the stairs can get pretty dangerous because you would think that a stair is there, but it's actually like not, and you can lose your footing really easily. So with all that being said, um, reading, and driving were probably the two things that were the most difficult with vertigo. When I would read and I would focus and converge my eyes to look at the page, I would be reading one line, but then everything starts to move because your muscles have to work to focus your eyes on the page and then be reading one line and then I would like move to another line because I wouldn't know where I was and all the words would just kind of like string together. It was a really strange, nauseating, terrible feeling and I just couldn't read anything on physical copy for a long ass time. So the times when I actually could read, I had to capitalize on those and use those times to do paperwork for work because work was mandatory. And I kid you not, it was so fucking physically and mentally and emotionally draining. There was probably a period of like two to three weeks where I would come home and cry like every day and then just go to sleep and wake up the next day and pray that I don't throw up all over myself while I'm driving to work and just wake up and repeat again. There was a period of like a couple months where I just didn't talk to anyone besides my husband and that is so sad, but it's just, it just drains you of life and it, it's just awful. With all that being said, I am incredibly thankful to have a really diligent and caring doctor who worked with me over probably the first 22 weeks of my pregnancy to get me on some medication regimen and some combo of medication that worked for me to at least stave off the active vomiting and the losing of the water and the electrolytes. Um, so I did eventually start gaining weight again, which is the trajectory that I should be on. Around that time when I was 22-ish weeks, that was about when I read my first book, this whole pregnancy, I know, wild, right? Last last year, I think I read like 150 books. Um, around that time, we also went to, um, on our baby moon to Hawaii, and then I was well enough and I had established a good enough medication regimen to go to BookNet Fest when I was about 30 weeks and I had an amazing time there and I am just so thankful for modern medicine and for my doctor. So all that being said, I am doing okay now. I am waiting through the last few weeks of pregnancy. We are just waiting to hold our little baby in our arms and we're really, really excited. The book community has honestly been really supportive. I have made some amazing friends who like voluntarily texted me while I was going through all of this, just checking in on me. And I think 
that it is safe to say that people who think that internet friendships are just whatever are talking a bunch of garbage because these are real, true, amazing, wonderful people and I am very thankful for the community. Before you guys ask, the sex of the baby is a surprise because I know I will get at least one comment down in the comment section. So anyways, I am going to do a little wrap up of some of the books that I've been reading. Most of them I actually read in September and October. There are a couple from like way long ago that I don't really remember a ton about. So it's not going to be like the most serious or detailed wrap up, but whatever, here we go. So the first book is Intercepted by Alexa Martin. We have our protagonist, Marley Harper. She is dating an NFL football player named Chris, who is a total douchebag. And one of the, her old hookups, whose name is Gavin Pope, actually gets drafted to play on Chris's football team. When Chris does something particularly heinous, Marley decides to move on. And the rest of her story is some combination of her rebuilding herself emotionally and career-wise. Also how she has to deal with the wives and girlfriends of the other members of the football team and whatever is going on romantically with her relationship with Gavin. I was super excited for this because my favorite romance trope is the one that got away and then comes back. Um, and Marley is also a biracial woman and there are characters of many different races throughout the book. Starting with what I liked, I like sports stories a lot and this one in particular talked about how head, brain, and spinal cord injuries can affect a football player for the rest of their lives. They also talked about this one side character's experience shopping in a maternity clothing store, which I'll, I will tell you right now is somewhat of an experience. And there is also an incident of harassment on public transportation, which I think happens more often than we would like to think or believe. And that's not something that I see talked a lot about in books. And that's something that is shown here. This is a super individual thing, but I personally prefer more prose to more dialogue in a book. And this book was super, super dialogue heavy. And for that, I am glad that I read this book on audio instead of physical copy. And I think that even if I hadn't been dizzy and sick, I would prefer the audio just because there is a lot of dialogue. But if that's not something that bothers you, then you can totally disregard that. Something else I did find a little bit grating was that Marley would talk and she would add a hashtag at the end of things. So for example, um, at a point in the book where something good happened, she said hashtag touchdown, which is printed in the book as like literally hashtag and then touchdown. And then on the like, audio, she would say hashtag touchdown. It wasn't like too often to make me put the book down, but I was just like, oh, that's annoying. Overall though, the book was really enjoyable and there will be another one in the series. So I will definitely pick that up. And I gave it three and a half stars. The next book is the first in a graphic novel series. While I was dizzy and sick, the two mediums that I consumed books in were audio and graphic novel. So this is a graphic novel called Goldie Vance and it is the first volume. I just borrowed the second one from my library and I'm super happy because I loved this one a lot. The way that I would describe it is probably a combination between like the old Archie comics with Grease and Nancy Drew, but like a tenfold more diverse cast than any of those. Our protagonist Goldie Vance, she's 16 years old. She is biracial and she works at the valet department of a hotel, but she also moonlights as the on-site detective and she solves mysteries that happen at the hotel. In this particular volume, there is a piece of jewelry of one of the hotel guests that goes missing, and then there are many different parts of the mystery that ends up being pretty deep and complex. Goldie is also awesome because she has a vast knowledge of cars from working with so many cars every day. She also knows how to race and can kick your ass in racing. And she has like a romantic kind of flirty relationship with another girl in the story, although she nor the other girl ever say the words that they identify. I gave this volume four stars. And the next book that I read is an absolutely remarkable thing by Hank Green, which I also did on audio. This is about 23 year old April May. And one day she is coming home from work in the middle of the night and she spots this robot like creature on the street. She calls her friend Andy and they make a video about it that eventually goes super viral and find out later that there are these robots or they're called Carls all over the world. One thing that I loved about this is how it talked about creating on the internet and how creators interact with other creators and also with their audience. They also talked about the feeling of owing people time and energy when you're a creator and also how people like to push boundaries that you set on the internet. I liked how it talked about how the political is very personal for some people and can affect every single aspect of their lives. For example, their job, the ways in which they can be with their family and how when the political isn't personal for some, that can be very frustrating to the former set of people. Where I found this lacking was character development in terms of the background of each 
individual character and any sort of like history and real personality traits um, the tone of this book I would compare to that of Ready Player One because it's both really conversational but also somehow very impersonal. It's tricky because the conversational part gave me the guise of feeling close to the characters but every time I would pause the audiobook I wouldn't ever think about the characters or like how they're doing or how they would react to something in the story. It was really strange. So again that kind of conversational nature made it a really good audiobook but in terms of connecting to the characters right now I could like do with or without them um, because but because I like the audiobook experience a lot, I will probably pick up the next one in the series. But am I going to give it a reread anytime soon? Probably not. I ended up giving it three stars. And the next book is The Princess and the Dressmaker by Jen Wong. This is a graphic novel about Prince Sebastian and his parents really want him to find a bride, but he is more interested in expressing himself through the dresses that he commissions from Francis, who is a dressmaker that he hires at the beginning of the book. He goes out at night after everyone thinks he's gone to bed in these beautiful dresses under the persona of Lady Cristalia. He also houses Francis in the castle where he lives and keeps her a secret and Frances eventually kind of becomes frustrated with this because she is so talented she wants to be a famous designer and she is totally incognito and no one knows she makes these dresses so I love this book so much um, one thing that I loved is its use of color um, during all the scenes where it was royal or they were in like some regal setting they used golds and then muted olives and, and salmons to really kind of bring across that royal feeling but then when Sebastian or Lady Cristalia would go out in the dresses they would use use really bold, vibrant, bright, saturated colors to emphasize kind of the different themes and the different feelings and, and just how great he felt when he would wear the dresses. There was also talk of gender identity and expression, and I really loved how both Francis and Sebastian showed strength and skill, but kind of quietly. Overall, I love this book and I gave it four stars. Next book is a book that I read in July, and this is a book that was on my most anticipated of 2018, and this is The Kiss Quotient by Helen Huang. Because July was like three, four months ago, I don't remember a ton of the little tiny details, but my Goodreads review says, and I quote, Lord Jesus, mama needs a cold shower. So take from that what you will. This is an own voices contemporary romance about our protagonist, Stella Lane. She has Asperger's syndrome and she hires an escort whose name is Michael Fawn. He is half Vietnamese and half Swedish and she hires him to practice physical intimacy. Over the course of the book, she starts to have feelings for him and they find that they just really click together and the plot is about how they navigate their relationship. I loved how this talked about a couple things. So first of all, boundaries and consent were really important. During all of the sex scenes or physical physically intimate scenes, the boundaries and asking and granting consent was very explicit and I think this is important because Stella is still learning about what she likes and doesn't like. I also liked that there was talk about what the body and relationships meant to her and how and if both of those things were connected to how emotionally connected she felt to Michael. This was all tied together nicely because Stella loves things like math, algorithms, cognitively framed things, and what she has effectively is a working relationship with Michael because she did hire him. So we see her navigating that and balancing it with her feelings. I really love this book. I thought it was the perfect balance of introspective and sexy and I ended up giving it five stars. Next book is Sadie by Courtney Summers which I read on audio and I'm very glad that I did because it is a full cast audiobook and it is a full experience. This is about a girl whose name is Sadie and her little sister Maddie is found dead one day and she is really distraught about it and embarks on her own investigation. There is a radio guy named Wes McRae who picks up on the case and also starts his own investigation investigation as well as an adjoining podcast that he calls the girls and the reason why the audiobook is so enjoyable is because we hear those actual podcast episodes he interviews people who were close to Sadie and people close to the case and each of these people is played by a different person on the audiobook and you can really hear like in the background of their settings for example this one woman was in the middle of a diner so you can hear silverware and people calling out orders and this other woman had a child so you can hear the child fussing and screaming in the background it just added so much ambiance and so much more. I think this is a true testament to how much work and thought goes into an audiobook. It is a mystery, so I won't give away anything more about the plot, but I will say that there is a content warning for sexual assault, abuse, and violence. Overall, I really liked this and I gave this four stars. Next, I read My Brother's Husband, Volume 2 by Gangoro Tagame. This is a book that I talked about in my graphic novels recommendations video, um, but at, at that time, only Volume 1 was out. The story is about Mike, who is a big, 
bearded, burly Canadian man, and he was married to Ryoji, who unfortunately passed away. So Mike travels to Japan to spend some time with Ryoji's brother, Yaichi, and his daughter, Kana. And the plot is just a continuation from the plot of the first volume. And this one, I think I liked just as much because we already knew the characters and they just continue to learn about each other and how they function as a family in society that the book describes as not very accepting of families that are not your traditional father, mother, and a couple of kids. There was one scene that I loved where Kana was the victim of some bullying at school and this guy who was, I think, the teacher or the principal does some really poor victim blaming and tells a Yaichi that the other students are uncomfortable with her family for good reason. Instead of punishing the students that were at fault, Yaichi gets really upset about this and it was a turning point for him because it really expanded his worldview. But apart from that, I'm not going to give any more away about the plot just to say that this was just as good as volume one and I gave it five stars. The last book that I'm going to talk about is A Very Large Expanse of Sea by Tahara Mafi. I was very skeptical about this book, not because of the subject matter or anything like that, but because Shatter Me is literally one of my least favorite books out there. But because this is contemporary and has a totally different feel to it, I decided to give it a shot. This takes place in 2002, so the year right after 9-11 happened, and our protagonist Shireen, she is 16 years old and she is Muslim, and she's just trying to navigate her way through high school in a predominantly white community, where she experiences racism, Islamophobia, and xenophobia from a lot of her peers. Something that I enjoyed was that she wades through a lot of misconceptions about hijab and women and girls who wear hijab, and how for her it is a choice and why she makes that choice. She also has a great relationship with her brother Naveed. They both love breakdancing and they practice together. The plot revolves mostly around her relationship with a boy whose name is Ocean. He is not Muslim and doesn't experience the same things as she does, so how they interact and work through their relationship can be tricky in this community. I actually loved the way that this was written, even though I did not love Shatter Me. Like I was saying, books with a ton of dialogue are not my favorite, and I find that a lot of contemporaries can be pretty heavy handed with the dialogue, but I found that this has a really great balance between the prose and the dialogue. Again, I did lots of this on audio, but there was one kind of small tick that kept showing up, and it was only very minimally <laughs> annoying, but every time there would be some kind of descriptor, whether it be adjectives or adverbs or whatever, um, it would be like, this thing is X and Y and Z. So there would be three of the descriptor, but separated by and. It was repetitive enough for me to notice and process every time just because of like that rhythmic kind of this and this and this. But again, just a very minor thing. Um, I ended up giving this book four stars. So that is it for this video. I would like to say that I am back, but realistically, I will have a screaming, crying, pooping baby in my arms very, very soon. So I don't know when I'm going to make my next video, but I just wanted to make it a point to pop on here and say hi to you guys and let you know what I've been reading. Let me know in the comments how you're doing, what you've been reading, really anything you want to say. I am here for it. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in my next video, whenever that may be. Okay, bye.